How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. In today's episode, I decided to see whether I could make a decent whole wheat loaf for just one pound or less. So let's go to the kitchen and see what I came up with. Although the British pound is a pretty strong currency, you can't buy much for one pound these days. That is why I was surprised to see a full-sized whole wheat sandwich loaf in the bread aisle of my local supermarket. How can it be so cheap? I understand that these big factories buy their ingredients in bulk and it comes out cheaper. And the production process is so automated that there's basically no labor costs attached to this. But still, that's pretty cheap, especially for a whole wheat loaf. And this got me thinking, can I make a 100% whole wheat loaf for just one pound? So let's head over to the shop and see what we can find. First off, here's that bread. And we'll buy it just to see what it's all about. And we'll get some ingredients. Some whole wheat flour, some yeast, some oil and salt. And I'm not going for the cheapest ingredients here. These are the ingredients that I use in all my videos. I didn't even consider their price before I bought them. But I was taking note of how much they cost. It is quite handy for them to include the cost per kilo or per 100 grams. In fact, when I go shopping, I only look at those figures. That's how you find the best deals for everything. Okay, let's head back to the kitchen and see what we got. We'll start with whole wheat loaf. It costs only one pound. It's unbelievable. And that is one and a quarter dollars for my American friends. You can see that the label says it weighs 800 grams. So that's the weight that we'll be aiming for for our finished loaf. Looking at the ingredients, it contains whole wheat flour, water, yeast, salt, vegetable oils, and various emulsifiers and preservatives. Those are the ingredients that make the bread soft and make it stay softer for longer. So the cheap price and the softness are the two most appealing things about this, I think. The only thing that this kind of bread lacks is flavor because it doesn't go through much fermentation. It can go from raw ingredients to being bagged up in about an hour. Now here are the ingredients that we got. Good quality flour, we got some yeast, we got some good sea salt and some half decent oil. So obviously, when you buy your own ingredients, you are in control of what ends up in your loaf. I'm not saying these are the best of the best, but these are things that fit my budget and they are for the most part from reputable companies making quality products. I am not sponsored by anyone here, by the way. Although I wish I was, I'm pretty sure that I've spent more money on Dove's Farm flour than anyone else. Okay, so we got our benchmark loaf, we got our ingredients. Now we need to come up with the recipe and the quantities of each ingredient that we'll need. And then we'll be able to calculate the cost of each ingredient. And we'll see if we can make a loaf for just one pound or less. And I hope I haven't made the following too confusing. Right, so here we go with the calculations. Supermarket versus homemade, one pound challenge. That's what I'll call this. First, we need to come up with a total dough weight. Accounting for evaporation during baking, I would say this needs to weigh about 915 grams. Now here are the baker's percentages. Flour is of course 100%, water, I went with 80% hydration, 1% yeast, 1% salt and 5% oil. To calculate the amount of each ingredient, first we need to add up those percentage values. 100 plus 80 plus 1 plus 1 plus 5 equals 187. Now we divide the total amount of dough by that number. And that tells us how much 1% of this dough will weigh about 4.9 grams and all we need to do now is multiply that 4.9 with the percentage value of the ingredients to make it simple and to use baker's percentage first i find out how much flour i need and i use the percentages to work out the ingredients in relation to the flour that gives us 490 grams of flour 390 grams of water 5 grams of yeast 5 grams of salt 25 grams of oil and that equals to about 915 grams of dough exactly what i was aiming for now onto the cost per 100 grams the flour was at 15.7 pence, the water cost nothing, the yeast was 125 pence, the salt 80 pence and the oil 30 pence. So the flour that we need for the recipe would cost us 76.93 pence, 6.25 pence for the yeast, 4 pence for the salt and 7.5 pence for the oil. And that's a total of 94.68 pence. And yes, I'm not counting the cost of electricity. It would pretty much double the cost of this loaf. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but the internet tells me that it will cost me about 60 pence per hour to run my oven. There are things you can do to offset the cost of electricity. Bake more loaves at once. That will make it less costly per loaf. Use cheaper ingredients. You don't have to compromise on quality either. You'll still be able to make good bread. Flour can be had for as little as 7 pence per 100 grams. Salt could be 16 pence and oil could be 15 pence. That pretty much cuts the ingredients cost in half. Let's move on to the recipe that I came up with. A soft texture, good flavor, and good keeping quality were my main goals. So I decided to use a dough improver for the softness. If you want to learn more about dough improvers, check out the principles of baking place. I have a full video about this. Now for the taste and the keeping quality, I'm going to be using a pre-ferment. 
And of course, I have a full video about pre-ferments in the principles of baking playlist too. As you can see, this recipe formula is split up in three parts. The Udana, with the dough improver, the pre-ferment, and the main dough. It might look complicated, but it really isn't. These simple methods will improve the bread, make it a lot better than the shop-bought one. You can find the detailed written recipe in the link below the video as always. But here it is, visualized. So on the right, we have our pre-ferment, which is made up of flour, water, tiny bit of yeast. In the middle, we have the Udane, which is made of flour and boiling water. And on the left, we have the rest of the ingredients. The pre-ferment and the Udane are made a day ahead of time. The Udane needs to cool down well before it's used, and the pre-ferment, it needs to ferment. I like to make them in the evening, so they're ready by the next day. Mix the boiling water with flour until there's no more dry flour left, transfer the Udana to a clean bowl, cover it up, and pop it in the fridge. When it comes to the pre-ferment, in a small bowl, combine the water, the yeast, and the flour. Again, mix until there's no more dry flour left, then we'll cover it up and leave it to ferment. Then on the next day, we'll mix all of the ingredients together, let the dough ferment, give it a fold, pre-shape it, final shape it, pop it in a tin, final proof it, and bake it. So I'm not going to go through the steps in too much detail. It's not really a recipe video. What I would really like to do is to encourage you to try out something like this. See if you can make your bread for less than one pound or one dollar and 25 cents. And I want to thank everyone who got involved in the community post that I made about this topic. There were some awesome answers there. Of course, most people were concerned about the cost of electricity and gas. And I totally agree. Like I said, it would pretty much double the cost of this loaf for me. But the way I see it, if you're making bread at home, then you're not really doing it to save money. You do it because you like doing it. And the things that we like to do cost money sometimes, right? I mean, you don't buy a car to just look at it. It needs fuel to be enjoyed. So the cost of electricity is just our cost of admission for making nice bread at home. But of course, we need to be aware of it and we need to know how much it costs. My oven is on pretty much every day, so it does cost me quite a bit. But I don't believe that the cost would ever be so much that it would make me go to the shop and buy bread there. But of course, for people who don't want to make bread at home, this makes perfect sense. Buying it can be a lot cheaper than making it. And it's more convenient. You go to the shop, it's always there, it's always fresh, and it will stay soft and fresh, even up to a week after you brought it home. Which I'm not sure how those bread factories do. I wager that it's pretty much impossible to make a bread that has the same texture as that loaf that I just bought. That is where the emulsifiers and all the additives come in. Mass-produced bread is more like a cake. Instead of being fermented, the dough is aerated and whipped, emulsified and stabilized. It is a sponge at the end of the day. And that's why it doesn't taste of anything. It is fermentation that brings out the taste of the flour. It is fermentation that makes the bread firmer. And that is why, instead of being made in one hour, a homemade bread will take several hours, or up to a couple of days. This bread took about 16 hours in total. And that is from the Udana being mixed to the loaf coming out of the oven. Let's get back to the cost a little bit here. At the end, I decided to brush this loaf with some egg. It'll give it a nice shiny glaze. The cost of the amount of egg that I'm using would be less than a penny. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not trying to recreate the loaf one to one. All I'm trying to do is make something similar that will have pretty much the same weight, the same use and the same price. Of course, not counting the electricity. By the way, I just recently realized after all my years of baking that the dough scraper is the perfect tool for releasing a loaf from a tin. I mean, I guess I'm late to the party, but I literally never realized this. Anyway, here's the final loaf. And doesn't it look good? I would take this any day over the shop bought one. And here it is 24 hours later. And now we can have a quick look at these side by side. Of course, the shop bought loaf has a much greater volume and it's a lot softer. But that's about all it has going for it. This challenge actually got me thinking. Maybe we could do like a reverse engineering project. Get a popular supermarket bread and then try to figure out how to recreate it at home. Not worrying about the costs though. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this idea. Okay, so let's compare the two breads that we got here. The one I made is pretty soft, but it's nowhere near as soft as the shop-bought one. And I don't think you would really want it to be, because the shop-bought bread is so soft that if you were to try to smear some butter on it, it would tear the crumb. The bread I made is nice and loose, but it's also bouncy. It has a light texture, but it still has a nice bite to it. The shop board bread is so, so soft. It is quite amazing. But when you press it just a little bit harder, it does not spring back. And that is one dead giveaway for a raw piece of dough. If you ever got some homemade bread and you squeezed it, it would spring back. If you press it and it doesn't spring back, it means it's underbaked or even under fermented. And that's what the shop board bread is. It's basically not fermented. 
I mean, just look at it. I didn't even press it too hard. It turned into a piece of Play-Doh. Chunks of dough like that going through your guts can't be easily digestible, right? And digestibility is one of the main points here. Slow fermented bread is much easier for our stomachs to digest. And I guess all the consumption of mass-produced bread could be a reason for why a lot of people these days are gluten intolerant. I have personal experience with this, because I am in fact slightly gluten intolerant. If I eat a lot of bread that is quick fermented and made with commercial yeast, it gives me rashes on my skin. But when I eat slow fermented breads, or breads made with pre-ferment, or especially sourdough breads, then the effects of my intolerance become a lot milder, or they don't appear altogether. And I guess that's it for today's video. I'm looking forward to hearing about the costs of your bread, and don't forget that you can share your bakes on my Flickr group. We have a nice little community there, people sharing their bakes, having discussions and sharing ideas. You can find a link to that in the video description or in the pinned comment below. So how much does your bread cost? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.